discuss after the official session. So, uh, yes, Professor. I'm sorry to speak again. I, I told you yesterday that we Southern Spaniards are very really talkative. And uh, as no one wants to intervene at the moment, I take advantage of it to pose your question. I apologize because I have tried a little late to your presentation, but I thought something about an issue that has been a public discussion in Spain and in other European countries, which is the issue of apostasy. Uh, about this European Union treatment of the um, data protection. So the issue basically is, it has appeared in my country, is the, on the one hand, some people apostatizing, uh, they want to make it public. In most cases, I would say it's not just a matter of personal interest, but it's a matter of public recognition of apostasy as a matter of principle, as a flag. Uh, and the reason is, I have the right to have my baptism and data erased from the church files. And at the same time, the position of the church, it happens especially with regard to the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic Church, is uh, we respect your decision to abandon the, the Catholic religion, but we cannot erase your data for one reason. They are historical data. It's like your birth. It's, uh, um, you, you cannot erase your data in our baptism book for the same reason you cannot erase, you, you may suicide if you want, but you cannot tell before suiciding to the civil registry, erase my data, I never existed in this planet. And for us, the church says, your baptism is the birth to a new supernatural life, cannot help it. It's part of our belief doctrine, of our essential doctrine. So it's history. We do whatever you want, we don't treat we, we, we excommunicate you if you want, but we cannot erase your data from our practice. No. The Supreme Court in Spain dealt with such a case. They didn't solve the case. They solved it in a very I mean they, they took just the, the, the least and not the substance and they declared that the baptism book for the purposes of the European Union regulations uh, couldn't be considered data files in the technical sense. And therefore the charge was exempted to comply with those provisions. And uh, but they didn't approach the substantive issue. I would like to know the opinion of this. Thank you for that question, uh, which is uh quite complicated one since it's dealing with the um, very sensitive file of the data protection law. Um, my very opinion, if I, would like, if I may present my personal opinion, would be that the um, regulations of the data protection should be as well, especially regarding if we would be talking on the European Union level, should be treated and legally um, applicated in the equal legal meaning. So if we would say that these data in this meaning are being an object of a data protection law, which is in the same way being applicable to other data, sensitive data, it should be removed as well. That would be my opinion. I see two person. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry for talking or speaking again, it seems that uh, the Polish people are just as talkative as, as the Spaniards. <laughs> but my contribution this time will be just a remark and, and just or a reference to, to what you just mentioned. Uh, the same problem has been dealt with quite recently, a few months ago, by the, uh, by the Polish public authorities, by the Polish Supreme Administrative Court, uh, and it was dealt with. I mean, the, the, the court approached the problem uh, and ruled that uh, this data should be erased. Uh, and the reasoning for this uh, was uh, based on the argument that the, the, scope, the, the scope of the religious autonomy of the church uh, is defined by in the relationship between the, the church and the member of the church. And if someone wants to be, or doesn't want to be a member of, the, of this church any longer, 
that means that his interest may not be defined by in terms of or somehow related to the scope of the church of the religious autonomy. And so his or her interest should prevail in this context. Thank you. I have a question that may be really stupid, just show my ignorance, and there may also not really be an answer to it, but um, um, I, I, was, I was grateful that you pointed out that there's no way in which uh, this particular part of European law can um, change the religious law in member states. That actually had always been my own understanding. And yet it seems to be one of those areas where there's an awful lot of public concern. And it's not just concern by people who don't know anything about it. It's concern that's partly fueled by people who should know better. So my question is, why? And I mean, can, can, you, can you explain that, um, if, if, if there is such an explanation to be had? I think the, the, the explanation could be um, done with the focus on the general problem of the European Union, which is the dialogue with the citizens of the European Union and the institutions in the member states. This is a huge problem, the transparency still at the European Union level. And as you know, in my uh, own country, in Poland, there are only, there are as well great objectives against the Charter of the um, Human Rights of the European Union. And, and one of the um, argumentations, what is in my opinion also late, um, was as well the regulations on the religion not only of the religion, but the equal treatment and according to the gender and so on. So I think this is only the problem of the information, the diesel for diesel for information. Yes. Maybe I can give an answer to that too, because I remember that when this problem came up. It was that in the 80s and 90s, in particular the beginning of the 90s, the European Union still denied to talk with the churches. They said, that's not our business, we don't have any competences on that, and they denied that there could be a problem that European Union law might intervene uh, with uh, the autonomy of the churches uh, and, and the different regimes uh, of state-church state relationship in the member states. And I remember very well that the constitutionalists who are specialized in the state-church relationship and as well, many lawyers from the churches were very concerned about that. And that led to that uh, declaration and now to the provisions in uh, the treaties. Uh, it also has to be understood on, before the background that European Union law has also extended to many, many problems. And uh, with, uh, due to the system of the distribution of competences between the European Union and the member states, there were almost no sections of uh, law within the member states which were totally free from any influence of the European Union. And this explains uh, the concerns uh, which now should be mainly settled with the new uh, regulations in the treaties. And this sitting here as a practitioner in this, this conference to uh, make this file of law as one of your special branches of the scientific research because this is really a very, very interesting topic and at the very beginning that's why I introduced my presentation as a talking about a baby because we are still here really in the very beginning in the European Union and is nowadays in a great uh, situation of great change on the one side we are talking about common values what are the values of the Europeans if we even are able, the 28 member states to set up our common values. I think it happened partially, partially with the uh, Charter of the Fundamental Rights, but also in this aspect, as you know, there were some countries that had um, serious problems with the uh, values or the adoption of these values, and, and finally joined the so-called British Protocol. And the European Union is something that began as an economic community, and there has been this community for very several years, but nowadays it's uh, slowly, slowly changing and it's um, extending to other political files, to common foreign policies and other common 
policies and maybe one day, who knows, we will um, finally wake up the European Union in the shape, as Churchill said, he was a great visionary, but he said after the Second World War in London in his famous speech that he will be dreaming about the United States of Europe, in which it will be the only way and maybe the only shape for the member states to create a common prosperity. like to just remark that our time has come for us to leave. Uh, on this occasion, I would like to thank uh, Professor Elas, Professor Martinez Soro, and Professor Bakuri for their excellent presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, to go now to, uh, to the boat trip, so uh, as, uh, as you were told, we will be driven there by bus and the, and the boat will wait for us. So, um, um, it's, it's, it's just, um, so we will be led um, outside by, by the service personnel and um, everything will be told you at the, at the door and outside, so I will be waiting for you with uh, the personnel of uh, CPG. Um, Thanks uh, to the, the contributions we had today by uh, by all the speakers. Yeah, um, I like the time is a very very different question, now, a very difficult question now because we had moved uh, the conversation uh, by minute by minute. So it's uh, it's uh, as, as fast as possible, I would say. And uh, so yeah. Yeah. So. Um, we, we would have to move there. So, um, but uh, ju just let, let me um, let me um, inform you with uh, with all, with with uh, with uh, uh, Lee, with uh, all the the CPG officers. So I will uh, we um, I will uh, I will speak with him, and we will give you the information at the door. So we we will we will inform you, and we will guide you there. We will go with with you. With, uh, yeah, I I cannot say to you right now the, the exact time. You see, yeah. Thank you.